Open for the audio where you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, ain't no stopping us till we reach the finish line And hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now. Got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. Giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. Sickest podcast, tuning for the audio where you can even watch back. Giving players all the props or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk back. S I C K. S I C K. S I C K. S I C K. For the audio where you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line All in, we came in a Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now. Got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. Giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in a win. We're gonna give everything. S I C K on the run. S I C K sick, sick. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S I C K on the run. S I C K sick, sick. S I C K, it's a sick. This podcast, tuning for the audio where you can even watch back. Giving players all the props or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk back. S I C K. S I C K. S I C K. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the sick podcast. With Tony Maradero. No, 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 no. It's with me, Matt O'Han. The 
the sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. It's going to be sick. Good Friday evening, everyone. I am Matt O'Han. Welcome to the Sick Podcast. Of course, as usual on Fridays, Tony Marinaro is out. I, the Hebrew Hammer, am in. Well, we had a Canadians game tonight, a rare Friday night game, one of two Friday night games in two weeks. We got another one next week on uh, the day of the trade deadline, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, But tonight the Canadians played the Philadelphia Flyers, a 5-2 win, their second 5-2 win in a row. That's a two-game winning streak uh, for those keeping track. Uh, The Canadians are not doing well in the reverse standings uh, as they are currently three points uh, behind Vancouver or three points ahead of Vancouver, depending on how you're looking at it in the, uh, the, uh, the standings to have the best odds. Uh, the sick podcast is brought to you by energy transportation group. They are a full leading, uh, a full service logistics provider serving all of North America, energy transportation group driven to be different. And also brought to you by brood in Quebec and a winner of a dozen international awards, La Bite Atibi offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bite Atibi, embrace your true nature. And of course, by Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs had a 50 goal score, it's time you went back to Lacage because the menu will surprise you. Uh, not too much of a surprising result tonight, I would say. Uh, you know, the Flyers are not that good. The Habs are not that good. Uh, the Habs seem to, you know, be winning at a at a pace that doesn't make much sense with the bodies out of the lineup. Uh, but anyways, to break it all down, uh, we're bringing in, for the first time at least on the Friday edition of the Sick Podcast, we have Treg Wilson of the Hockey Writers and the host of the Habs Unfiltered Podcast. Treg, how are we doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Uh, just about as well as the Canadians are doing. So that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> oh, so pretty good, pretty I, good tonight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's Friday night. You know, it's a little cold outside, but the cold never hurt anyone. Um, all right. I mean, you know, a lot of good things from tonight. If you're looking at individual performances, uh, why don't we let, let's start with the goal scorers themselves. I thought David Savard was incredible tonight uh you know he's he's been pretty good all season whenever he's been in the lineup uh yeah just an all-around solid performance from him uh yeah I think David Savard's had a great season considering he's a third pairing defenseman playing top pairing minutes all year uh yeah he's a bit slow and stuff like that but uh you know when you have a young defense like they have to have a, a veteran like that step up play above the minutes he's used to playing and succeed. How can you complain about that really? And uh, it's just good to see the offense getting in and, or sorry, the defense getting in on the offense and for a guy who's not very offensive to be contributing as well. Yeah, we, well, we've seen that in the past few games. I mean, Justin Barron's been uh, scoring a couple of goals. Mike Matheson's gotten on the board, and now we see David Savard. And, you know, I, I really like David Savard. I think he gets a lot of flack undeservedly so there's a lot of players on this team uh that i think get a lot of undeserved flack and he's one of them and that's probably because you know he was brought in <coughs> as the quote-unquote replacement for shea weber when you know news of shea weber's injury got broken down okay they play similar styles but shea weber is probably a future hall of famer while david savard is not um but yeah exactly. so he, he he was kind of brought in you know as a, to play like that rough and tough similar style and you know, he was kind of thrown into the mix. And as you said, playing top line minutes when, you know, he's a third pairing defenseman, uh, you know, on most teams. But again, just I, I really like what he's done. You know, it says a lot about a guy uh, throughout the entire season who will step in there and just, you know, from from game one, you know, the Canadians are not stupid. They know 
you know, expectations of the team by, uh, by the media and the quality of their own team that it was not going to be the best season. And he steps in there. He's blocking shots. I remember at one point he was the league, he was the league leader in shots blocked until he went down with injury. So, you know, that says a lot about a guy for, uh, that's playing on a team for on a season that quote unquote was lost before it already started. And it's not just that it's leadership with the young guys too. I mean, you have four or five rookies playing on the Canadian blue line on any, any given night. And, He's always had one with him on his side. He's either had Gooley, uh, I believe he had uh, Baron, Baron tonight. Could be wrong, uh, <clears throat> but he's always had 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 a rookie on on his left side, and just the way he's been guiding the young guys. And I, you know, I give a lot of props to his leadership and his uh, his teaching on the ice uh, as to how well the young guys have been playing this year. Yeah, well, there you go. And, uh, you know, he get his, his efforts were rewarded with a goal. Uh, you know, again, just he was he was incredible in that first period, kind of felt like he deserved it. One guy who had an assist on that uh, on his goal, the primary assist is a guy who's been playing pretty darn good hockey and another player who gets a lot of, I would say, undeserved flack. On this team. And, you know, I've been saying that for the past couple of Fridays when I've been on uh, hosting this podcast is Mike Hoffman. I just think another just very good, solid performance from Mike Hoffman Two assists. He had the primary assist on uh, David Savard's goal. He had a breakaway chance earlier in the period. Uh, didn't come up with it. But hey, I mean, the Habs get the win. And uh, again, just Mike Hoffman has been playing just fantastic hockey ever since he's been playing up in the lineup. Well, I I just tweeted actually during the game that Mike Huffman and Jonathan Drone have been the two of the best players since the All Star game uh, for the Canadians. Uh, Mike Huffman's, I believe, on pace to score seventeen goals this year, um, which isn't bad considering how things started. I think the flack with Huffman is people just think he's a one way uh, player. He doesn't back check or play defense, but he does. I've seen him do it, um, not often, but I've seen it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you have players like that. that. That's what makes up a team. Like you have some players that do that. You have some players that play strong two way. Uh, you just have to take Huffman for what he is. And since Caulfield went down, I think he's really picked up, uh, you know, especially on the power play, which is, isn't great, but it has been better. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I think, I mean, this could go two ways. His value is going up. Maybe they can trade him to a team at the, at the deadline, uh, even though he has term left or, you know, it just bodes well for the next season. Um, well, the, yeah. Well, I, I, go, no, I was just going to say, I, I think he gets yeah. a lot. Of, I was just going to say, I think he gets a lot of unnecessary flack as well. Um, I mean, Mont Montreal's a bad team. No one's going to really shine. I mean, Caulfield and Suzuki were shining before Caulfield went off hurt, and that was about it. And Montebo, I'll give Montebo props too. He's been playing well as well. But uh, so this guy. You know, he's still going to get 17 goals. Well, well, get 17 goals. well, there you go. He should, especially with the way he's playing right now. And, and let's 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 dive into that a little bit, because we are a week away, uh, exactly a week away from the trade deadline, uh, minus seven hours uh, Eastern time. So I, I've been saying this for a while now, like I know he has a year left on his deal after this year, but it's only one more year. And. I feel like a team can, uh, you know, there are uh, tons of scouts in the Bell Center every, any given night. And I, there's got to be one team that says, man, this guy could really still rip the puck. And like, that's really, that's his MO forever. You know, like, don't, don't ask him to play defense. Don't ask him to back check. Just feed him the puck and he'll put it in the back of the net because he could do that. There's got to be a team that looks at that and says, you know, we could use that extra boost on the power play. Maybe we could get Montreal to eat some salary. I don't see why the Canadians wouldn't be able to explore a trade with, uh, with Mike Hoffman in the next week or so. Oh, me neither. Uh, I've, I've actually written an article where Mike Hoffman was one of my people that said he could probably be traded at the deadline. He, he's been playing very good hockey, not just scoring goals, but he had two assists tonight. I think he had three assists in the, uh, uh, not too long ago, I'm not sure if it was a New Jersey game or not, but uh, uh, he he he's 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 passing. He he he's shooting. He's offensively playing very well. 
Uh, and that's what you need from him. And any team going into the playoffs who needs that secondary score, uh, on the, especially on the wing or someone who could boost their power play, uh, that's, you know, that's just money in their bank. It's just going to help them through the playoffs. And, uh, I mean, Hoffman can be one of those guys. His four and a half million cap hits, what's going to shy people away. But like you said, if Montreal can retain some of that money and they're willing to do it over the two year span, why not? Why not get rid of it? Or take a bad contract back when, when you get rid of him. You yeah, well, know, that's exactly. Possible. Well, that's exactly what yeah. they did, you know, with uh, with with the Sean Monahan deal, or the yeah. because they got they got a you know a bad contract. It ended up working out until he got injured, um, but it's a bad. It it was considered to be a bad contract, but also, you know, they traded away Shea Weber and they got back Evgeny Dodonov, and that's a pretty high dollar cap, a high dollar figure on his cap hit. So. Uh, again, it's just he he's a player. He's still got some juice. It's pretty evident, you know, like he's, he's up there in age a little bit in hockey to, in hockey uh, with regards to the hockey age. But I, I still think uh, a lot of people don't give Mike Hoffman enough credit in that. Uh, I, I really think he could be a primary target for a lot of teams for, you know, everyone's asking for trades. So uh, so, you know, why not him? I wouldn't be surprised if people are, are calling around and asking about uh, Huffman. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. I, I, I do find uh, that uh, Kent Hughes seems to be pretty stubborn in what he wants for a player. He has a, mm. this is what I think this player is worth. Um, and he doesn't seem to stray too far from that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so far, he's pretty much got what he wanted. Um, so I guess it's just a matter if you can find a team, I don't know, maybe Edmonton or someone like that, that could use that secondary score, use that winger. Um you know, that could hide, help boost dry sidle and McDavid or something like that. And, you know, see what they can uh, offer back and see what works. Um, I have no issue with trading a player with term. I don't see why anyone would have issue with that um, because the team the next year can always get something back for them at the trade deadline next year. So. Well, that. that's it. I'm right, I'm right there with you. <laughs> And, you know, it, it's funny because a team, you know, you, you, you say Edmonton, uh, a team that comes to, that came to my mind, you know, in as unusual of trade partners, it would be mostly because when they were talking about this, I believe last week before it was before the Ryan O'Reilly trade, because that broke uh, as we were on, as uh, I was on with uh, Stu Cowan. Um, but it, the Toronto Maple Leafs, it's funny. They were talking about on overdrive with Patrick Kane. They go, that's exactly what the what the Leafs need. They need a top six winger, and I'm like, do they really? But then, like, you look at the lineup, and it's like, yeah, they got five guys filled out in their top six. But you know, you got now you now you got John Tavares playing at the wing, which is working for now. I don't think that suits his his play best. Um, I don't know. I think the Toronto Maple Leafs could use some juice in their lineup. You know, they're not exactly if either of those top two lines are on the ice, they're not going to be spending much time in the defensive zone. So you don't got to worry too much about the uh, about his defensive shortcomings. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't have Toronto on my just. Dis- only because Toronto needs grit and strength come the playoff time. I think uh, the only forward they're going to get is O'Reilly. I think they should look at. I think they're going to look at defense now to try to uh, strengthen that, especially with Muzzin out. But that's uh, that's a good point. Like, yeah, you're absolutely right. You put him on a line with O'Reilly. Well, I think O'Reilly will play center come playoff time, but uh, like mm-hmm. on the third. But you put him on that uh, second line with like a uh, oh O'Reilly and uh, Tavares and. You're absolutely right. He doesn't need to play defense when they're there because they're just going to be in the offensive zone the whole time. So it could work. I never actually thought of Toronto. That's a good. Uh, that's an interesting scenario. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, Colorado could be another team that could use them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the Boston Bruins. I mean, I grew up '80s and '90s, so I'm not a Bruins fan. But uh, uh, the rivalry between the Canadians. But hey, the Bruins could use another. Uh, put him on the third line and. Uh, that could be the the secondary scoring they need to put them through the playoffs. That's it. And, the you know, the Bruins made a bit of a splash, uh, you know, earlier in the week as well, acquiring Dmitry Orlov. I thought it was, a, you know, Orlov's a very good player. I should start off by saying that. But I thought it was a super, very steep uh, price tag for him. You know, he's a top four defenseman. I don't think uh, that's pretty, dis- that's uh, disputable, but uh, you know, it's, it's always shocking when you see a player go for a first, second and third 
And then you kind of start to look at comparables to the team. And then you kind of wonder, huh, the top four defensemen uh, went for a first, second, and third. Obviously not all in the same year, but still, nonetheless. Uh, you know, what could a guy like, who knows, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, I will get to that name soon of what was mentioned yesterday on this uh, on this podcast, but like a David Savard, because I think that's more of a likely candidate if of any of, any of the defensemen right now and the Canadians to get traded with Joel Edmondson's injury. So it's like, what could Savard fetch if, uh, you know, if a guy like Orlov went like that? Obviously, Orlov has the uh, the offensive upside. Well, Chirac got a first, and uh, mm-hmm. David Savard is not much different than Chirac. A little bit older, I think. I have to look up the ages, but uh, um, I don't know if he'd grab a first, um, maybe a second, or maybe a, a, a B level prospect, maybe. Um, but I think a first. Well, I, you're absolutely right, though. Orla, I mean, Orla's a top four. Savard's playing top four minutes, so technically, I guess he's a top four on Montreal anyway. Uh, but if you've got a guy who's used to playing 20, 23 minutes a game and then you have him only playing 15 on your team, uh, like say he goes back to Tampa, um, yeah, that could be that could be a positive for them because he has all that more energy to go around in less amount of minutes and uh, he gives them exactly what they need. Um, I, I don't think he'd grab a first, though. I really don't. I don't think it'd be that high. Yeah, I, I think know. it's it's the 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 age has uh, has a factor. Yeah. It's funny because because like when Tampa Bay acquired him from Columbus all those years ago, en route to that Stanley Cup victory against the Canadians, he fetched a first. You know, he so did. He did. Yeah, he fetched yeah. a first. So it, it's always so funny when we you know like you look at these trades that go down, and then you try to think like, oh, that sets the market, and then a trade yeah. like the Orlov one happens, and you're like, whoa. That's a lot of yeah. picks. Um, you know, it's always funny how the how it just gets reset, and it must be crazy how these negotiations go down. But hey, maybe a team is uh, desperate for a defenseman. All right, let's talk about it. Um, speaking of big big returns on defensemen, we both briefly touched upon this right before the uh, the countdown clock went on and the song started going. You know, George LaRock was on this podcast, uh, I believe it was last night, if not two nights ago, and he said that Mike Matheson, I don't know if he said it definitively, but he said he would at least fetch a first-round pick and the Canadians are going to explore trading him. He could have said it definitively. I'm going to give him, I'm going to, I don't want to get that wrong. So I'm just going to say it that way. Um, you know, we both had the kind of the same reaction, you know, like, what? Are you crazy? Is this guy nuts? Um, which a little bit, but that's okay. We all are. Um, but <laughs> we were like, what is this guy nuts? But then we stopped and we're like, huh, that actually kind of makes sense a little bit. It, it, it kind of does. So on Twitter, it was definitive. I don't think it was on the show, but uh, Twitter made it sound like it was definitive. <laughs> yes, so, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think – I think he just said Matheson would be an option before uh, the March 3rd deadline. Uh, that could fetch the return that Hughes wants. Um, again, Twitter said he definitely was going to get traded by March uh, 3rd, according to George Laroque. Um so when I first heard that, I thought, all right, George, you had one too many fights. There's something going on here. Uh, we got we got Matheson for a reason, and he's actually doing what we've got him to do, unlike some other uh, players that we got. And uh, then I thought about it. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> okay, we have like 12 left-handed defensemen in our system. Yes. Uh, I mean – you got Jack Guy, Gooley, Harris, Struble, if he, he signs with the team. Uh, Lane Hudson's going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, you know, that's five right there. Uh, Kovacevic, I think, is right-handed but plays left. Um, so we have all these left-handed, and I'm thinking, someone got to go at some point. Mm. And, uh, you know, if you can get a good return on a guy, like if you want to go with the rookies – who have been earning their spots. Gooley was earning a spot before he got hurt. Jack Eye was earning a spot. Harris is earning his spot now. Uh, Kov- Kovacevic, the the waiver wire guy that, uh, uh, you know, has been the most, probably one of the most consistent D-men on the team all year. Um, 
he's earning his spot. So, yeah, yeah, it kind of makes sense. If you want that first-round pick, you want that prospect. I mean, if Orlov can get a first, a second, a third, and a and a, a, a Craig a Riley or Smith, Craig Smith. Yeah, Craig Smith. Uh, yeah, if you can get – then – Pretty sure Massing can get at least a prospect and a first. At least. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. And, you know, like, <laughs> you, you, and it's just, you know, it sounds crazy because, you know, the Canadians traded away, uh, you know, they, they acquired him. They traded away Ryan Paling. They traded away Jeff Petrie. And, yeah. like, you know, he's like, a, you know, Matheson is 28. So young, but, a, you know, a veteran's young, we'll call him. Yeah, And, like, it makes sense that he would be a part of the future, but then you just see how well all these players have been playing. Like, you know, you, you mentioned a bunch of them. Like, Gooley was playing well till he went down. Uh, Jack Eye has been – what a surprise that's been. And then you have on the other side, you, you know, you, you just got so many defensemen in the system that, like, they can't all play. And this isn't uh, – right. it's not soccer where you're rotating a, you're rotating a squad every every game uh, depending on the situation. So it's just, like, someone, someone's got to go. And I, and I wonder who that someone or two players might be. And, like, you know, right now I'm just taking a peek at our, at our comment section. And, and, you know, people are saying, hey, we need veterans. We can't trade everyone. Well, it's like I agree. Uh, however – you know, people will be moved, you know, there will, this is going to be yeah. a far, this, at least it should look like a far different team after, uh, at, at this point next week. Right. Well, I mean, you want to talk veteran Edmondson's going to be there next year. Cause he's not moving at the deadline. Uh, I, I don't see him going. Um, so you have him if he's healthy, if he, if his back isn't too bad, cause I, I believe that's what his issue is. Hmm. Um, so you're going to have him. Uh, if Davis Avar doesn't move, you still have him for another year. Uh, you can always acquire a veteran defense man in the off season. Um, so there are options. I mean, and I get it. Like I, I was like that. I was like, wait a minute, Matheson. We just got this guy. And he's playing great. He's like an upgrade to Jeff Petrie. He's pretty much mm-hmm. the exact same player, only a little bit better than Jeff Petrie. And uh, but. It, I mean, let's be honest, Montreal is not going to be a contending team for a couple of years now. And uh, these young guys are going to have to, veterans or not, they're going to have to get their time on, time in. And moves are going to have to be made. So if you can get the uh, highest value yeah. for them now, go get it. Well, that's it. You know, like it, it, it's – how often does it happen in a season where a team is able to acquire – you know, uh, he has term on his contract, but like how often, how often is it that a guy at a pretty reasonable price, I think I would say, uh, is up for, is, you know, up for, up for the taking, he's up for grabs at this point in the season. It's just, it, it's to me, it seems like, yeah, why not? Like, why not try to take a swing at this guy? If we're, if, if, you know, I'm the whatever team, you know, I would say the Boston Bruins, but they obviously acquired Orlov. Um, hmm. But like if you but before they did, if you're the Bruins and you say, huh, we need a puck moving defenseman. We want someone that's relatively young that can help us in the playoffs. You know, like let's let's call let's 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 give an ask. You know, throw out a feeler, and you know, I doubt Kent Hughes is willing to say is willing to hang up the phone on any player that's not named uh, Nick Suzuki Cole Caulfield. You know, so absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, I discussed uh, on 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 my podcast earlier that maybe Harris would be the odd guy earlier in the mm. season. I never even thought of Matheson to be honest with you, because well, we just got him. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, we're not, he's not going anywhere. We just got him. Um, but yeah, the more I thought about uh, what uh, what what George said, the more I was like, damn, yeah, that that kind of makes sense. It kind of kind of does. Uh, and I mean, he knows more people than I do. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, maybe he heard, but it wouldn't, I, I'm absolutely with you. It wouldn't shock me. Uh, there's a bunch of teams. I'm going to go back to the Oilers. They're looking for a puck moving defenseman. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of teams that'll be looking for a puck moving defenseman. And if they come calling and the price is right, if I'm Ken Hughes, I, again, if your name's not Caulfield or Suzuki, I'm going to think about moving you for the right price. Yeah, and, I would. And I, that's just the way it is. I I forgot to mention in that 
that the that duo of names. Let's add a third in Caden Gooley. I think that's uh, well, sure. That, yeah, actually, that, I had that on one. my mind as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I think that's one that uh, he wouldn't yeah. take a call on either. But you know, at, at this point, it's like yeah, players are playing well. Cause you know, that's what, that's basically what's going on at this point in the season. Cause like the games essentially, you know, I think most people would come to the, would come to the conclusion that the Canadians are not going to be getting the number one odds for the best pick. And that's been that way for a while. So the games don't really matter all that much anymore from a wins loss perspective. And frankly, they never have. Uh, it's all about evaluation. And while, yeah, sure. A lot of players are playing really well individually. You know, the team is still, there's a reason why they're, you know, however, however many points out of a playoff spot, they're a bottom 10 team in the league. Yeah. There's a reason for that. So, you know, while, yeah, these guy is playing well and that guy's playing well, you, they can't all stay because, you know, you got to add talent in somewhere. So it's going to be interesting for sure to see where that happens. Uh, just before we continue, let me tell you about Playground. Playground has over 600 machines, poker tournaments, and Playground casino games, daily promotions, and unmatched customer service. Why go anywhere else? Located just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes away from downtown Montreal. Um all right, Treg, uh, let's take a quick pause because something piqued my interest when I when I uh, went to your Twitter profile, and it's that uh, you're a, you, you well, you're an amateur bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay, that piqued my interest because it's like you know I was going through your tweets. I'm seeing like okay, well, let's 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 see what this guy's talking about lately, and then I go, I'm and then I see one that I come to, I come across this one. This one killed me. I'm doing cardio at the gym. Ask me anything. And it's like, what, how do you got time to answer the, how do you got time to answer tweets when you're doing cardio? Well, I mean, you're on a treadmill. It's not, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm manager bodybuilder. I did my first show in October. I finished third in two events. And, uh, so yeah. And now I'm going to do another show in September, two shows, one in the end of September, one in the first of October, and then, uh, go to nationals and see where it goes from there. So, you know, Tony, uh, Tony Marinero, the host of this podcast, he constantly uh, will say, oh, I mean, this happens every now and then. He'll kill me if he knows he's if he knows I'm saying this. So I really hope he's not watching but every now and then. You know, he's uh, he always says, oh, I started a new uh, diet plan. I started a new, uh, you know, workout regimen doesn't last too long. I feel like uh, I feel like we we both have a chance here. Like, let me get you guys talking. <laughs> You know, you could get him on a disciplined regimen and then, you know, he won't look, you know, we can't let him look as good as you. You can't give away all the trade secrets, <laughs> but, you know, I feel like there's a money making proposition here somewhere. You know, if we, ha if we well, just hash out the finer details. Well, first he has to quit calling it a diet. It's a meal plan. That's there what he has go. to first start doing. If you think it's a diet, you're never going to stick to it. Um but yeah, hey, I'm willing if Tony, you know, if he wants to, I'm only two hours away. If he wants me to come down and uh, hit the gym with him, I can show him, give him some pointers and that if he wants. Well, that's it. Okay, well, let me tell you. Okay, so because just to, not to get too off track right now, because, yeah. uh, you know, our, list, our listeners will kill us. But um, we're, it's I was at the gym today and like. I freaking hate cardio, man. Like it's the worst, but I know I got to do it. And, you know, and it's just like, what's, uh, what's your, uh, what's your tricks, if any, to, to make the time go by quicker other than doing AMAs on the tread, on the treadmill. Uh, I watch shows. So, uh, mm. right now I'm off season a bit right now. So I'm only doing 20 minutes a day of cardio, not much. Uh, but when I'm in, uh, two to three weeks before the show, you do 60 minutes. So, uh, yeah, I just put a show on like an hour. Like I was, well, I think, uh, last October I was watching house of dragons or whatever it's called. I, mm. So I put that on and just watch that and take my mind off whatever I'm doing. It, it you listen, cardio is boring. I, I, I hear it's, you. it's boring. horrible. <laughs> but, uh, it, 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 it's boring, but th that's what I do. I just, I just watch a show or, uh, something, something to keep me mm. busy. So, yeah, or have cool. AMAs. I'll, I'll there, there, you go. It, so, there you it, go it's funny because when i do it i do it for 30 minutes at a time and you know i'm like i'm running but like i gotta because i find it so boring i need to make it fun for myself somehow and i gotta pump myself up you know so i'm um, i listen to uh you know at what 
not most people would call uh, would consider music, but I listen to a lot of like intense uh, dubstep music uh, when I'm, especially when I'm at the gym. And like, I, I just want to tell this quick story because it, it's just yep. it made it made me think of it. Which is, I was this is a uh, this is a couple of years ago at this point, but I was just starting out at the gym. You know, I'm on the I'm on the treadmill. And I'm listening to a very vulgar song, you know, just like I'm dropping F-bombs nonstop. And I'm like not knowing this because it's one of the first times uh, I'm not noticing because it's one of the first time I'm wearing noise canceling headphones. And I am just like, I usually mouth words when I'm on the treadmill, but I was just outright singing. And someone taps me on the shoulder and goes, sir, this is like a nice, you know, middle-aged woman taps me on the shoulder uh sir i don't know if you know this but there are high school kids here and you are just outright swearing like a maniac right now <laughs> and i was like oh my god well i was like first of all high school kids swear that's the first thing second of all wow that's embarrassing and i just like i was like okay well i'm sorry and i was just like looking around the entire time as i was on the treadmill so yeah that was just uh a quick little funny story I wanted to fit in there. Um, all right. I'll tell you a secret too. When you bodybuild, you don't run; you just walk on a treadmill. So, <laughs> well, there, yeah, there. Do you walk on an incline? Is that the? Uh... Yeah, you put it on the highest incline, going at about two and a half, and then walk. I'll tell you. This. All right, I'll. Uh, you know what? I'll try that next time. <laughs> uh, maybe I won't be like needing the energy of like mouthing vulgar f bombs out into the world as I'm at the gym. Anyways, okay, let's get back to the Habs. Um, yeah. So an another player who, again, we were talking about players. You know, they're 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 playing well individually, and they're like they're kind of forcing their way into the lineup. Over the past few weeks, we've talked a lot about Raphael Harvey Pinard. But you know what? We'll talk about a different guy tonight. While he did, you know, he did have a point tonight, which is great. You know, he's keeping his streak going and, you know, good, this good run. But Jesse Yelonen, this guy had a goal and an assist tonight. And, you know, I've heard a lot, you know, whenever he was brought up, you know, you listen to the guys who follow the Laval Rocket a lot. And they say, this guy's got an NHL shot. He'll stick with the team. He'll stick with the team. Years past, I never really saw it. And then this year, it's like, whoa, okay, yeah, maybe he does have something, some juice in the tank. Um, I don't know. What did you make of him tonight? And uh, what do you see of him moving forward? I've always liked Gillen, and I met him at the draft in Dallas when he was drafted in 2018. Um, he's a good kid. He has a wicked shot to him. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as good as Caulfield's, but it's pretty, pretty fast and accurate. Uh, I don't know if you watch much Laval games, but if you watch that, he's, he's mm. pretty much does the same thing Caulfield does on the power play. Sits over on that left side and uh, and does the shot. Uh, I thought he had a great game tonight. I think he's been playing very well for the Habs since he's been up with them. He hasn't really been getting a lot of points. I think he got – he's getting three, I think, in the last few games, like two tonight and one either last game or the game before. Um, uh, but I, I find he needs to get used to the size of the NHL players. I found a night he got pushed off the puck a lot tonight. So uh, I, I think going forward, he's, I think he'll make the team. Um, I just think he's a slower developing player than some of the other guys. Um, but I can see him as a solid third uh, third line winger. And uh, that's, you know, I mean, a pitcher of Lekkanen, uh Right. Yeah, pitcher of Lekkanen type player. I, I think that's what he's going to turn out to be. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Well, I want to say more up offensive upside, but if you watch what Lekin is doing in Colorado, it's pretty mm. even pretty offensive. So uh, I, I'm just going to say like a like a Lekin. So I think it's going to be a Lekin type player. Well, and you know, I think a lot of people would take that because you know Lekin again, okay, not the most, not a lot of people loved his game while he was in Montreal, uh, mostly because whenever they needed some offense, he just he they he he always created chances always. Just couldn't happen to hit the net, and then he get he and it's funny moves over to uh, moves over to Colorado, fills the net like it's I mean it's literally his day job, but you know the, as the old expression is uh, like it's his day job. But he did have the most important goal in the Habs history in the past twenty years. That's correct. Uh, that was <laughs> that is one hundred percent correct. You know, for people like me who have never seen a cup win, 
I, I will never forget, you know, I was lying in the bed that's over to my left right now. And uh, cause I was working early the next morning and I completely blacked out when he scored. It was yeah. like, Whoa, what just happened? Everything's happening right now. So uh, yeah, he, but he yeah. did miss the net a lot, but he scored when it counted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. He did. And uh, I mean, but 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 back to Yolonen, you know, like I always really like those guys that come up through the European system because they're playing against, you know, in their draft years, they're playing against men for the most part. You know, mm-hmm. they're not just playing mm-hmm. against fellow 18 year olds. So, so I don't know. I, I, I like I like what I'm I like when I hear that. I also like that, you know, like Lekkonen had some offensive talent for sure. But this guy has like a laser of a shot he does that he does. that's the part where the, yeah. where i'm like okay you need to get a little stronger because as you mentioned he was pushed off the puck a couple times when you get that out of your game you're like every coach's dream of a third line player and if an injury happens no problem throw you up in the lineup yeah and and he's he'd be great on the second power play too once he gets that shot down and because like i say he's not as good as caulfield as but he he has a i would say he has a shot almost as good almost mm. um but uh and it's a laser and it's pretty accurate when he gets it on um and yeah he's gonna be i could say i'll go back to it elect it's a per- perfect comparable to him he's gonna go uh, uh he's strengthened his uh, defensive game and uh get his offense going and he's gonna be a great two-way forward on the third line um so we talked about Yolon and another player who had a who had a pretty good game. I mean, a lot of players had a good game. You know, it's hard mm. to knock anyone in a five-two win. Um, but uh, a guy who had another good game. His name has been tossed around. I don't know if there's. I mean, I usually am a firm believer in where there's smoke, there is fire. And when I hear his name being mentioned by the big guns of the industry, the big shot insiders. I, you know, it'll pique my interest. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was said that Josh Anderson, you know, he, he's not on, he's not being shopped around per se, but uh, it would take a pretty large, significant bounty. Uh, interested to know what you would think uh, if the Canadians would move him, because I had Stu Cowan of the Montreal Gazette on last week. And he said, you know what? Like, listen, it's going to take a, it's going to take a, a big bounty, you know, to, to get him from a team for, to prime away from the Canadians. But I really don't think at this point I would trade a player like that. That's a guy you want on your team. And, you know, you look at his frame and you kind of agree. I, I, I agree. However, everybody's got a price. So what would your stance be on the uh, whole Josh Anderson situation? I like Josh Anderson. I like what he brings to team. The team hasn't a power forward like him since, I don't know, dare I say John LeClaire days, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he is tradable. I think uh, – uh, uh, I mean, a move that I know Calgary's uh, Brad Trevilling. Am I saying that right? Tre, Tre Levy, uh the GM there. Uh, he's been wanting him since he was in Columbus. Um, they have a pretty good goaltender. And I know Ken Hughes has said that he wants a young, almost NHL ready goaltender and Dustin Wolf mm-hmm. over there. They have a first round draft pick. Uh, if they could do a move, something like that, uh, where they get the goaltender and the draft pick that they want. Maybe that causes him to move Anderson. Um, But like I said, Hughes is stubborn. He has a price that he has, I think, on his players that he's willing to uh, move them for. And I think uh, if any team's going to get him, and I agree with Stu, I agree. I don't think he should – he's not being shot, but then again, P.K. Subban wasn't being shot in 2016 Mm. either. (laughs) Look what happened. Look what happened like two weeks later. But if the right price, he's going to go. And I think it's going to take a first, a top prospect, and maybe more to get him. And uh, if a team's willing to pay that, I'm not going to say no if I'm Ken Hughes. Um, However, if I don't get exactly what I want, I can easily say no. Because if you look at his contract in about two years when they're ready to contend, he may not be so what he is today. Well, the, okay. So I'm glad I'm glad you said that because we kind of, yeah. we, you know, we're we're on the same page on that because he's 28 right now. You know, he'll yeah. be he'll be 29 in May, and like you said, you know, like right now, it's like 
what more could you want? You got a big guy. He's got good hands. He could score. He's offensive ability and he's aggressive. He'll take it to the net. But then, you know, like two, three years down the road, you know, you're 32 years old. You don't really have that same type of juice to play that kind of game unless your name is Alex Ovechkin. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's it's interesting because, you know, th- this was a contract that was signed by Mark Bergevin and he basically said, you know, what the hell do I care? You know, by the time uh, yeah. this contract's up, I'm not going to be here anyways. So I'll give yeah. him anything. And I feel like you could look at that contract and say and consider it kind of a two, three year deal, at, at least in production. Because that's really the the key the key years of production you're going to get. So we're we're pretty much uh, bang right on the same page for that one. Um, it's just interesting. I mean, like, right? I wouldn't trade him either. He seems to be like this is this, you know. I said this last week again, and I let me. I'm going to throw it at you, and you you tell me if you agree. Um, he seems like a guy who never ever ever phased by the media pressure here. Um, you know, be, especially because. You know, when he was brought in, we're talking, you know, the hype was, oh, my God, 30 goals. He's going to get 30 if he's fully healthy. And he, he's everything the Canadians dreamed of. And he he frankly has not lived up to that. And it's not, a, you know, whether it's bad luck, you know, lack of, uh, ta- you know, lack of production, whatever it may be. Uh, he didn't live up to that uh, to that billing. So. I don't know. I think uh, he he's dealt with the pressure just fine. Teammates seem to like him. He always faces the music. It's just like he's such a good guy to have in the room, which I feel like would add to that, which is more of the reason why you wouldn't want to trade him with such a young room. But, hey, you know, if uh, if someone wants to offer up uh, a king's bounty, you know, what are you going to do? Well, it's it's like you are saying. You're reading the comments and people saying we've got to keep some bets. Uh, he's one that I would, like, again, unless they're offering the world, I'd keep him. Um, now there's been rumors New Jersey's been looking into him. Calgary's been looking into him. I think wherever Timo Mayer goes or doesn't go could bring people back to the Anderson thing. Um, I like him. The issue I have with him, and it's like what we said about Matheson, he's good now. You want him on your team now, but by the time you got to get rid of him, you're not going to get back what you could get for him now. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? And that that's the – I mean – I mean, you could say that about any player. Um, so you got to really weigh the pros and cons. Now, the other rumor I hear is him going to Winnipeg in a Pierre-Luc Dubois move. Um, and when I say rumors, what I read on Twitter, I don't have any insight. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, uh, not like maybe Stu or George or someone has. I have none, zero. Um and that, that would be interesting as well, although I don't know. I mean, that's a whole different story, but I don't know if I trade anything for him when I pretty much can get him for free in two years. So yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so I'm like you, where there's smoke, there's fire. I think teams are circling around, seeing what the cost for Anderson is. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I think uh, the rumor has it he already turned down a first for him. Um, mm. I've never confirmed that with anything, anyone, uh, big credentials like Pierre Lebrun or anyone like that. But mm. again, something I read on social media. So maybe, maybe not. I keep them for now, but that's just me. Uh, just quickly before we get to the uh, comments of the evening as we're, uh, you know, we're all, wow, it's already 1044. Uh, we're, it's just something I felt like we should we should just at least spend a couple minutes on, which is the whole Patrick Kane situation. I, th- I find this so fascinating, you know, because the NHL, I, I don't know, they got to do something to make their trade deadline somewhat like the NBA's, you know, where like teams are doing it right at the deadline. You know, you don't want these things happening because, you know, we already had the big trades. We had Bo Horvat, Tarasenko, Dmitry Orlov traded. And uh, the latest thing to uh, come out of the uh, rumor mill from the insiders is that uh, this was about nine hours ago at this point is that we should expect a resolution to the Patrick Kane situation in about 24 hours. That was from Chris Johnston. 
I find this interesting because a team that's be, their their name is being bounced around a ton, and I don't know how they're going to do it, but it's the New York Rangers. Uh, thoughts of where you know if he goes to the Rangers, I mean, hand the Stanley Cup to them right now, kind of thing, you know. Um, uh, but also, just, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but uh, where 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 would you like to see a player like Patrick Kane go? Honestly, I'd like to see him in the Rangers. You know what? That that's. I don't mind the Rangers. I think the Rangers got a pretty good team. Uh, it was put together mainly mainly by our our vice president of uh, hockey operations. So mm-hmm. that kind of maybe bodes well for us and what he's going to do here. Um, I don't know how the Rangers are going to do it. Um, I guess they could lo- use Arizona as a money launderer like every other team's been doing with uh, throwing players out there. Um, a scenario I've seen online, just a, a random uh, Habs fan put on, was maybe a three-way deal with Montreal, and Montreal ends up with Kratsov, which he's been rumored mm. to be coming because Gorton's a big fan of his. Um, I don't remember all the details, but Montreal took some of Kane's money and somebody else did and here and there. Um but it'll be interesting because a team can only retain three salaries. So I don't know what uh, Chicago's up, but I think they have at least one already. Um, and uh, Kane also has to agree to the trade. So maybe New York Rangers are there because that's the only team he's going to agree to. Um, mm-hmm. But any team he goes to, it's not going to be Toronto. I can tell you that right now. Toronto is not yeah, going to yeah, get Patrick. They're, they're out on him. Yeah, 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 they're out. So. They're out on him at this point, uh, which I, I, I guess for Habs fans, uh, maybe also for Bruins fans, that's a great thing because, uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, I feel like we're all. I love seeing just because you know, like I love seeing Toronto in pain because they bring it upon themselves. <laughs> it's not one of those where you feel bad. It's because they're doing it to themselves. You know, where, where they're always like billing themselves as the Stanley Cup champions before the season already started, and then they can't make it past the first round. I just, even with Ryan O'Reilly, it may, kind of makes me even more want to see them get eliminated in the first round. Because it's like, oh, we got to go. We got to stand for the winner. He's done it before. He, we're going to look to him as a leader when the chips are down and, you know, we're on the ropes. I just want to see it fail again. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I just like looking at the Toronto Square and the disappointment that happens on thousands of people at the same time. It's, it's interesting. Um, I mean, we joke about Toronto. I, I, I get that. I think it's the fans that drive uh, us. It's the Toronto fans that drive the Montreal fans crazy and vice yes. versa. But, uh, yeah, I don't see them going past the first round anyway, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, it's just hard. It's just like at this point, it's like fool me once, fool me twice, fool me three times. Okay, now you got to show me. Show me that you can do it, and then I'll start believing. Uh, anyways, we're going to get to some comments. Uh, so uh, Sammy and in yellow, just prop them up, and we shall do our best to answer them. Uh, who will be the top six demon in the season opener in 2024? This question I kind of like because we well, there's so often there's that name. There's that list of names that we always say of all the prospects coming up. Uh, I don't know personally what all their situations are with like schooling and and all that kind of stuff but i you know there's one person who i'd like to see uh be given a shot because mostly because he's been doing a, you know he's been playing fantastic now i can't say he would be in the opening night roster but i would love to see what logan mayu could do at the nhl level at this point because he's been doing just great things with the london knights well he has to get permission to play from the nhl to begin with, mm-hmm. which I believe will come, judging from what Bettman was saying when he was in Montreal there last month. Um, I would like to see him. I, I would like to see him in Laval first. Uh, I, I agree with you. I'd like to see him in the NHL. Uh, he still needs to work on his defensive game, um, but his offensive game is—he's just wow! Like it, it's just amazing um, for a guy who only played twenty-four games in the past three years um, before this year. Uh, the top six, I, I don't see him in it <laughs> to start the 2024 yeah, yeah. season. Um, that's a good one because I don't know who's going to go March 3rd. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that's it. So, like, I think it, it's fair to say. So let's 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 hammer out who will be there. So we'll call it. Uh, there's 
going to be Jackeye. There's going to be Ghoulie. Uh, this is all bar. They're all healthy, yeah. obviously. So Ghoulie, Jackeye. Uh, we'll throw in Harris in there. Uh, tough to say, but I think Baron. Baron will crack it. I think he'll crack it. I think, I think, I think, think Baron will be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you'll have Ghoulie, Savard, Matheson, Baron, Jackeye, Harris. That's what I'm going with. Oh, well, there you just crushed all of our dreams of uh, so, Canadians, that's, that's, of George LaRock's rumor. You just crushed the rumor. Uh, that's what, right that's what I'm going to go with. I'm not crushing the uh, rumor. I just I just don't see it happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, but I, I agree with you there. And you know what? Like, j- let's just let's talk about him quickly. Justin Barron, it, I think it's fair to say he'll be in the top uh, the top six next year uh, come opening night. And. You know, I think it's just such a shame that he got injured last year at, at the point that he did. You know, he, he went down with that ankle injury and then, you know, he worked his way back through the, uh, you know, he started in Laval. They let him marinate there for a bit. But man, you got to think like you always think what if and like what if Baron didn't uh, didn't get that ankle injury? Would he have been in the opening night lineup? And then what kind of season would he have had until this point? Obviously, considering if he was fully healthy the entire way, you know, it's just the Habs got a good one in him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I, a lot of people uh, question the Lekkinen deal with Baron coming over. Uh, he was a first round pick of Colorado, and uh, um, he actually's from Halifax, where I'm from. So. Uh, 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 you know, I'm going to root for him in that, but I, I think he's playing well enough now. And I thought he played well enough then. I thought he was going to crack the lineup this year, as a matter of fact. Mm. But his his play in the in the preseason wasn't that great, and he went to Laval and he picked it right up, and 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 he came a long way. And yeah, I I I can see him in the. Plus, they have no right-handed defensemen, so they they need. Well, there you go. That always, there. yeah. By, <laughs> just just by that man, just by that measure, he's already in the top six. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, Sammy and Yellow, do your thing. Prop another one. This one's from Twitter. Is there any player on the Habs that you think will get traded that no one expects? Another interesting one. I mean, his name was. I don't even know if his name was tossed around, but we talked about him, you know, at length in this podcast, which is Mike Hoffman. I, I really think a team is going to look at him. You know, it's going to come to, it's going to come down to the last hour. They're going to say, we need, we need help on our power play. And, you know, this final piece to the puzzle of our, will complete our power play and it can be a game changer in the playoffs. And I think that key is Mike Hoffman. I, I really, I'm a strong believer in that. I, I like Mike Hoffman, but I'm going to throw this name out there, Jake Allen. Hmm. Teams like Pittsburgh are looking. Yeah. Teams like Pittsburgh are looking for a goalie. Jake Allen has playoff experience. He has, uh, you know, I mean, if Pittsburgh makes the playoffs, but if Pittsburgh wants to make a push, I can see them going for someone like Jake Allen. Yeah, that, you know, I, I haven't given that much thought, uh, but it makes sense. It's just the thing that throws me off uh, with with a Jake Allen trade is anytime I, I've thought about it or looked at it, because especially this came up when when um, uh, Kent Hughes was asked, who's like, what are your plans for Samuel Mont- Montembeau? And he said, you know, he's a part of the he's a part of the future. It's more just like Jake Allen. I mean, it's not much. We're talking, you know, just under a million bucks here, extra kicking in on his contract next year. Uh, but for two more years, you know, that that's something a team could, uh, could, you know, you'd think a team can handle if they're going to invest yeah. a little bit into the goaltending position. But, yeah, it's an interesting one that, uh, you know, I'm always in for a goaltender trade midseason. <laughs> I'm, always in, I'm, I'm always in for those types of moves. I, I just think Montebo's played well enough that I think Allen's come a little bit expendable. Now – who will be the backup next year? I don't know, but I'm well, that, go with that, that that's one of those things, and it's just because I, I've had this discussion many times with my, with some of my buddies, and it's a lot of like there. This was at the beginning of the season, or more towards the beginning of the season, and they were like, "Wow, Montembeau, he he's there's something there." And while I agree, there's also a big difference between being able to play well for. 30 to 35 games is a very good backup than to, you know, 50 to 55 games as a one, a in a one, a one B type of situation. And I feel like, you know, I may have just talked myself as I was saying that into saying like, Hey, maybe next year they'd give that a shot and see if he could handle being either a one, a or a one B. And that would mean, what do they uh, get the, to lose? The expense. Exactly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what do they get to lose? Not much. Like, they're, not, they're, not, 
They're not contending for another two, three years. So why not? Why not? See what there you go. Do. So, all right, Sammy and Yellow, let's go. Another one. This one's from John. He comments <laughs> every week. Will Montembeau be the number one next year? Uh, if they trade Allen, yes. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, no, but you know what? It, it's just like it's one of those. It, it, what what Kent Hughes said. I feel like it's another thing where you can kind of just. You could, if you're reading between the lines, if you're if you're someone who reads between the lines, and I tend to be one of those people, um, even if there's nothing to read between, is that you know I think that was kind of a hidden message in saying that we're going to give him a shot at some point. Yeah, you know he, he he will be there, and that could even mean Jake Allen could still be on the team, you know, and and it's just like hey, you're you know we're just going to give this guy way more of a look, and if we can move you, we can move you. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, Montembeau's on a contract year next year too. That's his last year of his contract. So, if he proves he can uh, do it, players usually play better on a contract year. So. Oh yeah. Well, uh, Who knows? talk to look at a uh, well. That was like the year that uh, Anthony Duclair was. Uh, you know, he he was in a contract year, and then he was representing himself. He was like, "All right, I'm going to go out there and score 30 goals on the Florida Panthers," and he did it. Um, so uh, we'll see. I mean, it's a big thing in uh, it's a big thing in football. The contract year. Uh, we'll see uh, how it bodes for him. And uh, you know, it's he's one of those guys. He's very easy to root for. Samuel Montebo is. So I really hope. Uh, you know, he takes the opportunity should it arise and he runs with it. Uh, so I guess I, that's both of our way of saying if I had to put a percentage on it, I would say 70 percent. Yes, he will be the number yeah. one goaltender next year. I'll agree with that. That's All right. We got time for a couple more. Let's see if we could get through all these. Will Gallagher get traded? OK, uh, at some point, maybe, you know. Like nobody is untradeable. I don't believe that. Um, I think this is a two, three years down the line, money laundering situation kind of thing. I, it's definitely not happening this year. When Galler becomes an LTIR uh, for the rest of his career type guy, which I can see happening in two or three years. Uh, yes. But at six and a half, he's not, uh, he's not a tradable asset right now. Yeah, definitely not. So uh, we're going to – that's a quick one. Uh, let's just pop another one up. Uh, this one's from Twitter again. Do you think winning these games will help next year? Honestly, yes. I, I really, really do. Because the uh, how many people have said it? How many uh, you know pundits have said it? Players don't care about the pick at all because – some of them might not be here next year to play with whoever this prospect may be. Call it Connor Bedard. They're not going to be, some of them aren't going to be here for that. And frankly, they don't care about the well being of the team at the cost of their own playing time and their own uh, c- careers. So, with that being said, I-, I think the winning is good. I think it's good for a young group to, you know, especially this kind of situation, you know, like next man up mentality. I think this is the perfect situation to be winning in when you have that, like, oh my God, another thing, what else could go wrong? And then three players get injured and they still somehow win the game. I think this is great for them. Yeah. I think uh, winning is the best for development. You, you develop better in a winning culture and it's only going to prove dividends uh, for next year. I think the team will be better. I don't think there'll be a playoff team, but I think there'll be a better team next year. So, yeah. So we, there you go. Uh, so we got time for just about one more. So uh, make sure it's a good one. Sammy and yellow, please. Uh, is Armia a keeper? I mean, the short answer for me is, you know, if you could get rid of him, get rid of him. So no. Um, but I, I really think, you know, teams can look at him and say, okay, he's not having a great season. Nobody is on the Canadians, but somehow this guy will is consistent in his inconsistencies, and then he makes it to the playoffs, and he is consistently dominant in the playoffs because the game just suits him so well. So, you know, you pop up his playoff highlights. I don't see why a team wouldn't want that. I like Armia, always have. Always thought if he didn't get hit with the injury bug every year, he'd be a 20-goal scorer in his first couple of years with Montreal. Um, 
not sure why Bergevin signed him for as much as he did, but mm-hmm. uh yeah, I don't see why. You look at his playoffs, he was a big reason why Montreal got through the playoffs like they did because of the way he plays his defensive style. He's a penalty-killing expert. And uh, even at $3.5 million, if a team wants to put the money out there to have him play that style of game in the playoffs, I can see it happening. Is he a keeper? I mean, I'd trade him if I could. Um, but really, technically, I'd say yes because I don't think anyone's going to take his $3.5 million contract. So... <laughs> well, that, well, that's it, right? It's like it's all like these things. These scenarios are nice to throw out there, but there are other teams yeah. that you have to be negotiating with. But, anyways, yeah, uh, I, I think I think though, like it's like, is he a keeper? No, but that doesn't mean I don't like him. Kind of thing, you know. It's just he he's just he's not right for the team right now. You know, two years ago he was perfect for the team. You saw what he did in the playoffs; yeah. it was fantastic. It's just uh, right now, not the case. Uh, anyways, uh, Treg, it is 11 o'clock Eastern where, so I'm going to get you out of here. I really appreciate you, uh, coming on, on this, uh, this Friday night, just tell everyone, uh, just quickly what you're up to, where we could find you. All right. Uh, I'm a Canadians writer for the hockey writers. So you can see me on the hockey writers.com. Uh, I usually have, I usually do my writing on the weekend. So Sunday through Monday, Tuesdays, when you see my articles come out. And you can also see me on Habs Unfiltered, the the podcast, which we do two to three times a week. Well, there you go. So, Treg, again, thank you very much for spending your Friday night online with us. And uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me. There you go. That was a Treg Wilson. Uh, All right. So, again, like I mentioned off the top of the podcast, at this time next week, the trade deadline will have passed. Uh, The Canadians, though, have a game in Anaheim at 10 o'clock. Don't worry. We will still be live. Until then, Tony will be back Monday. I'm out of here. See you next time. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And La Cage. If the last time you went to La Cage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to La Cage. The menu will surprise you. <laughs>